Hey guys! So it's currently 11.41 in the morning. And um, it's Saturday. Of course, it's Sabbath. Ooh. And of course, um, I went with my mom early this morning to go pick my brother up because he went to his friend's house in Brooklyn. Let me just put this up here. All right, well, first things first. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nazi Lisa. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, I post new videos every Wednesday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. And I do that through Bible studies, book reviews, book hauls, book discussions, discussions, blogs, and more. So, as I was saying, 1141, I just got back in the house and um, want my mom to take my brother. Oh, no, we picked him up from Brooklyn. He went to his friend's house. And, um, I decided I want to do a reading vlog for The Girl Behind the Red Rope. Now, I have already read this before. It is a Christian thriller. Um, I've read this. I enjoyed it. Uh, my review is down below. But I want to reread it because I did not annotate. I only marked, um, important quotes for my review that I had to do. If you guys can see. So, um, I know that I really did enjoy this. I did do guide sprayed edges. So, what I did was I got some acrylic paints. I have a bunch of acrylic paints up there. I haven't even used them in a while, but I have like a bunch and I paint the edges of my books um, if I remember to. So um, this one is a red hardcover with black text. So I did black edges on the side to match the um, book itself. But I really enjoyed this. I thoroughly, thoroughly was like hooked on this, which I think this is a book that really got me into Ted Decker because I think this is the first Ted Decker book I read. Um, I do own a few of his other books on ebook as well as physical books. So um, and then I know his daughter has nine, which is this book which i also read i think i gave it a 4.5 or something like that i can't remember what i gave it it was like 4 or 4.5 i did read it and enjoyed it and it has some slight connections to this book but i read both of these fast for reviews both my reviews will be down below so i'm going to read this one next week um but i'm going to be reading this one today this is about let me see it's like three something 300 and something pages yeah 330 pages long so i just plan to read it in one sitting um, I do have the audiobook. The audiobook I got on Squared. It's about 10 hours, but if I speed it up two times speed, it's about five hours. And if I triple time it, it'll be shorter than that, which I'm most likely going to triple speed it. So I'm going to read through this, but let me just share with you guys what I got. So, of course, we went to Barnes & Noble's and I got a pink drink with no ice. Um, I don't do ice because when you put ice in your pink drinks, they be playing. We did go to Dunkin' Donuts this morning um, and get coffee. I have a caramel craze hot latte i normally get it ice but it was cold this morning so i got hot i heated it up because i didn't get a chance to um drink it and we're gonna drink that um so barnes and Noble went there i did not get any christian books because most of the books that they have in the christian section um i own or they're historicals or amish and i'm not into amish or historical and the ones that they do have are like new releases that i already own and got sent for review so that was great but i did pick up four books that i really wanted so um immediately when we walked in they were having um like they had this take these tables with a lot of like their thrillers out uh buy one get one 50 percent off so i went and got this one which is vicious by v e schwab which i have read already it's a fantasy read it before i think i gave it a four or five star rating somewhere in between there um so i enjoyed it so i got a physical copy because i read it on ebook um so i got this because i know what it's about and then i got this one which is when no one is watching by Alyssa cole Alyssa cole is a black author and um basically she wrote a thriller all about gentrification in brooklyn if i'm not mistaken it's brooklyn yeah in brooklyn and um i'm a new yorker i know all about gentrification basically when they fix up the place and basically all of the black people have to move out because it's either they, they make the apartments too expensive or you know if you own a house they bring the taxes and all that up so this is a thriller all about gentrification in new york i'm here for it and i've heard really great things about it so i got it um so those two were buy one get one 50 percent off and then they had another table with some um great books out and they had the starless sea by erin morgerson now i have read her other book which is the night circus and i kind of enjoyed it i think i gave it a three three one five star rating um but i definitely wanted to read this because this book is like it's a fantasy and it's very lyrical but it's a fantasy it's like a story within a story so it's a story about a guy who finds this book in a library and the book within the library has pieces of his life in it and it sounds so intriguing to me so i got it i wanted the hardcover because the hardcover is really pretty i'll throw the picture right here of the hardcover so pretty but um this was cheaper so we got the paperback of that and i really do like this i still might get the hardcover but um yeah it's really nice and on the inside it has this photo and then i got this book here because i've heard a lot of people rave about it and um 
It is called Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. It is a Latinx book. I don't remember exactly what the author is. So the author is a queer, queer trans Latinx author. Um, so I wanted to check it out and, um, you know, see what it's about. It's a fantasy and I've heard people really enjoy it. And I'm always interested in all the cultures and things like that. So obviously you have the zombie looking thingy here, which has to do with the culture. I don't know exactly what culture it is. I can't, I'm not even going to be able to tell you, honestly. But I know it's Latinx. So Latin American base culture, LGBTQ plus rep. Um, it talks about deportation, colonization, racism, and acceptance um, with the Latin culture, like I said. And, um, yeah, it doesn't specifically say what the person is or the character. So, I'm interested. It's fantasy. And I got, I, well, okay, so the original one I had was really nice. It had, like, this gold um, floral on the hardcover. But when I went to go pay for the book, I saw that this one says YA book exclusive. So, when I opened it up, I was like, that's so cute. So, I got this because it's really nice. The original hardcover doesn't have all of this. It just has, like, a gold flower. On it, it has like this flower in the center, but I saw this one and I was like, I have to have it. So, yeah, pick that up. Okay, guys. All right. So I had to sit down because my back side hurt. But um, we went to Walmart a couple weeks ago. We went to go cruise shopping, and I picked up two candles. I got the spun pumpkin sugar, which smells really good. Love that. And then I also got this one, which is the pumpkin spice, which is the one I'm currently burning. It smells so delicious. Oh my god, it's so good. Um, so from Friday. I picked up this top coat. Um, it's the salon dip top coat. It's a gel top coat basically. Um, so I got it for my nails when I'm doing these because a lot of them come um matte. I'm not a matte person, so I have that. Um, and then I really went to pick up some candles. So the main candle that I really love is this scent here. It's Amber Orchid from the Candlelight Company. This smells so good. Um, this one is number 31, and this is Amber Orchid. It's Orchid Petals Jasmine Top. Tahitian Tonka in Amber and it smells so delicious. I will leave a link for a review of this scent I believe. Click the cards. Um, it smells so good and they're really really nice candles. Two wick. They burn for a long time. I've had my last one for about three months but again I wasn't burning it consistently on top of that as well so they just smell so good. They're light, but when you burn them, they definitely scent up the room. And my room isn't that big, but I got that one. I know about that one. Um, then I got the coconut old wood. It is shaved coconut, melon, pineapple, and old wood. And um, it's different. I'm not huge on coconut scents. Um, I'm not huge on coconut in general, unless it's a pina colada. But this one is a nice one. Sorry if you guys hear that. My landlord, again, with the chairs. I don't know. Um, then we have mahogany teak wood. I mean, mahogany teak, which I love. It's lavender oak moss teak wood and bergamot love this scent it smells like a manly scent and i love manly scents so well i mean so good i love it so we have that um and then these two i believe are new scents that i decided to try out because i don't think i tried these before this one is sea salt ginger it's lemon sea salt ginger and cedar and it has that sort of it's not like a strong lemon, which I can appreciate because I don't like strong citrus scents. They bother me, but this smells really nice. And then this one I got is called Freshwater Lavender, and it's lavender sprigs, juniper berry, marine, and clary sage. I don't like juniper berry. Juniper berry to me stinks. I don't know why. Um, but it's, it's a nice... You definitely get the sage and a slight hint of that lavender with a little bit of that ocean. But I think it's a nice scent. So, um, yeah, that is it. So, like I said, I'm going to be reading The Girl Behind the Red Robe. I have read it before. I enjoyed it. I love this cover. It, this cover is given all the type of, like, spooky, thriller-esque vibes. And I'm going to fix that a little bit. Yeah, but this this is really nice. And um, I'll read what it says on the back. So, on the back, it says, In a world where the boundaries are clear and punishment severe, a young woman risks everything to break free from the system of fear and control to find freedom and love. And on the inside flap, it says, Ten years ago, Grace saw something that would forever change the course of history. When a terrible scourge is unleashed on the world, she and others from their religious community are already hidden deep in the hills of Tennessee, abiding by every rule that will keep them safe, pure, and alive, as long as they stay there behind the red rope. 
Her older brother's questions and the arrival of the first outsiders she's seen in a decade set in motion events that will cause Grace to question everything she has built her life on. Enemies rise on all sides, but who is the real enemy and what will it cost her to uncover the truth? For the first time, best-selling authors Ted Decker and Rochelle Decker team up and deliver an intense, tightly focused ride through the most treacherous world of all. This book was really good. It definitely had those thriller vibes that um, I was looking for. I actually was completely surprised by this because I'm not a thriller person. I've said it before. The genres that I prefer are like biblical fiction, romances, and um, I love me some fantasy. Fantasy, any, any type of fantasy will do me. Like, chef's kiss. But this threw me for a ride and I I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a suspense. Um, it does have um, a cult in it. Basically, the religious group that she in, is in is pretty much a cult. And um, I enjoyed Grace. There is a character in here. I can never remember his name right now. But there is a character, Eli. Yeah, so there's Eli. And um, Eli represents, um, like, Christ for me. And then there's another character in here. I can never... Silas? Oh. Silas is like the epitome of evil like but I'm gonna give this a go again and I'm gonna read it through with you guys I do have it sectioned off into three parts and like I said I'm gonna listen to the audiobook so I will do that I'm not gonna give any spoilers um I'm gonna try not to do spoilers I did pretty good with Pearl in the Sand with that as a reading vlog so I'm gonna try to do that with this and not give spoilers because I honestly don't remember everything I just know um Eli and Silas reminded me of Satan and Jesus and then you have Grace who's like the main character her father her brother and there's another woman in here that like pisses me off but um this is going to be a fun read fun read fun read so I'm going to clean up my room a little bit and um I'll probably just keep the sweater on yes again I'm wearing the same sweater um the Faith Can Move Mountains from Sarai Apparel their Instagram is down below you can check it out um I really just love how comfortable it feels and I haven't put it in my closet so that's why I'm wearing it because my closet I have to move stuff to get into my closet and I don't want to do that and it was literally like are you going or not so I woke up and put this on and walked about so yeah I'm gonna put these books over there um I will be studying as well today doing some bible study Galatians 3 on today probably 3 and 4 depending on how I feel um but yeah we're gonna get into the girl behind the red rope um i'm excited to be reading that so i'm just gonna put these candles up and figure out if i want to burn that candle or something new i might do the fresh water lavender or the coconut old wood i'm not really into um like during the day i want something light and airy i could do my oil diffuser because hmm, i have a bunch of oils over there so um yeah if you guys like want like a collection video of like my uh, fragrances and candles i can do that um i pretty much just showed you my candles so yeah um i also like getting candles from dollar tree as well they have like the small little candles there's a specific brand i think it's old william bird candles i love those candles because they actually do scent the room they're so good but yeah i'm going to clean off this stuff put my purse up um and then get on this bed and read my hair is a little crazy as you can see like i've combed it through but i have to actually like get it washed and flat iron my mom is supposed to do it um maybe next week i can get it done because i'm over it. i'm over it as you can see like this 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 I'm, I'm over it i don't care i'm tempted to cut my hair again to an asymmetrical bob i had one before i'm tempted to do it again but i don't like cutting my hair <laughs> i hate to cut my hair and i hate that it's falling out but i don't know what i'm doing so i'm gonna keep this hat on for a few and um get to reading so when i come back i'll be on the bed reading okay guys so it is two um i did wait to do this so that i could actually enjoy my um drink so yeah i have my candle going the one that i'm burning is the sea salt ginger and it's the one with lemon sea salt ginger and cedar in it my mom is stepping out my brother one of my brothers is gone so it's gonna be a real chill day because my other two younger siblings are really quiet and stayed in their own zone so i have my laptop on bed because i'm actually going to listen to the audiobook on scribd on my computer since i'm using my phone to record and um yeah so it says that the audiobook is 10 hours like i said i'm going to start off at 2.5 
I was gonna start off at two speed, so if I start off at two, it'd be five hours. But I'm gonna eventually end up triple speeding it because I do read faster than they read. But um, I read the synopsis. I'm excited. I already have three tabs with some favorite quotes that I liked. But um, we gonna get into this book. We gonna get into it. And um, the bookmark I'm using is this one here. I just found. I I literally just Google bookmarks or Google like quotes and turn them into bookmarks. Um print them on cardstock and laminate them so on the front it has this and on the back it has palm trees and um i didn't have anything that was like this type of feel so yeah i have all my socks paid on mine um so yeah the first batch of reading is going to be 113 pages first things first is i need to put this on goodreads so that i know i'm reading this book so we're going to mark it in Goodreads um, and I'm going to read the first 113 pages. You'll see some reading and of course when I come back I will talk minimally about the book. So oh, and I do have my pens already to annotate. Of course I don't have my annotating key. I probably should get that. I don't think I need it. Do I? I'm gonna grab it. My annotating key is just back here. I want that one. Get one. Okay. So I got my Christian fiction annotating key. Um, okay. 9780000. Zero, zero. I'm sorry. 0. Oh, I'm looking at zero light like, girl. Okay. So I'm gonna mark it on the uh, mark it on my other good because I have my personal goodreads and then I have my Zora of Increased Goodreads account. Because my personal goodreads has all of the books that I read in a year, um, be it Christian fiction, historical fiction, fantasies and stuff like that. And then the Zora of Increased Goodreads account that I have is strictly just my Christian books that I read, so I'll leave a link to both of those down below. They probably should be there already, but I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited to get back into this. So, we're going to start. We're just going to jump into this. So, start listening. And I'm going to read. Hey guys so i'm back so i'm at page 113 that's about 13 chapters um and i forgot how frustrated this book made me with um their beliefs and 
how naive the main character Grace was. Grace was a very, 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 very frustrating and naive character. Um, and it's understandable because when things start happening, I believe she's at the age of six years old. And then I think the first chapter is when she's six. And then they, the second chapter spans 13 years after. So she's about 18, 19. And she's living in this cult. And it's just as frustrating as ever. Um, their rules, their laws, their regulations, their thoughts and views on sin. Silas just irritates me. Um, as a reader, I know what's going on and knowing what, you know, um, about the Bible and the Word of God, I know what's what. Um, but I forgot how frustrated this book made me. Um, great quotes, definitely some great quotes. I'll share a few. I don't have any tabs in here, so I gotta flip through my book to find them, but. Um, let's see, let's see. There's a quote on page eight that says, uh, even angels could show up as men and you wouldn't know the difference, which is so true. We come across angels on a daily basis and, um, you know, people never know if they're speaking with the regular person or an angel in disguise. And one thing um, my mom has always told me is to be mindful of how you speak to people because you don't know if you're speaking to an angel or not. Um, and you, you just never know. Um, so that was one thing they got me i'm trying to find another one i don't have tabs in here right now but um there's a quote on page 34 when eli lets ben know ben is uh grace's father um that you know it's okay to be afraid it's definitely okay to be afraid people tell us we shouldn't fear anything but it's natural to fear fear the difference is as a believer you should also understand faith and your faith should overpower that fear so i think that is awesome Um, I'm trying to find some more. There's a scene um, where she, I don't want to really spoil, I'm trying not to like spoil it. So there's this character named Bobby. And um, first of all, anytime I see the word, the name Bobby, I get excited because I immediately think of Supernatural and how wise Bobby is in Supernatural. And um, in this, Bobby is a it's an entity. Bobby is an entity, if, if you will. And I, I love Bobby so much. Like, Bobby is amazing. I, I want to spoil it, but I can't. So, I just love Bobby. Um, there's, uh, on page 73, there is... So, something happens where Jamie and Grace have to leave the um, Haven... I think it's called Haven Valley is what they call their little location. Um, so, they're basically... They have to leave. I'm not going to explain what happened, but they have to leave. And um, some stuff some stuff goes down okay some stuff goes down and silas appears and i can't stand silas he is literally a man in white and that's not a spoiler they tell you that like how many pages in seven pages and literally the second page of the chapter it tells you that there is a man in the back of the room dressed head to toe in white okay pants suit jacket shoes all pristine white his skin was tanned tight across a chiseled jaw red lips warm eyes bright blue eyes that oh um that has always wandered into my dream so it's not a surprise he's a man in white now we all know if we, we if we're believers and we watch the movies that we watch and the shows that we watch we know when there's a person in all white we know what that means okay all right so there's a scene where he just pops about the blue um because jamie is suffering and uh he starts basically preaching to him about the two servants and stuff so he says you can't serve two masters you have to pick a path which is also true um we can't serve two masters our only master should be god jesus christ and um there's some stuff that bobby says like it's it's really good and i can't really share too much because if i do it will spoil some things but um i will say the biggest thing for me that frustrates me is that grace is in this marriage to this man that she has no attraction to and their views on attraction like basically women and men should not be attracted to each other like period even if you're married you can't even live with your wife and or your husband until you guys are pregnant like sis what that's not how my book my bible don't say that so that part like irritates me and i feel so bad for grace but she also frustrates me because she's a very naive character and there's a scene that just happened where she's vomiting um you know she's throwing up and she doesn't know where this came from but for me i put that that's like a spiritual thing when you um i don't know if you guys have seen um like actually seen it happen in church where people are um in the spirit they're you know shouting 
or they're getting prayed for and they feel the need to want to vomit that is a spiritual thing of you basically ridding yourself of those spirits and there's a scene in there where she's like literally like vomiting and i'm just like yes because i know what's about to go down but i ain't gonna spoil too much of it so yeah so i'm at page 114 um the audiobook on three times speed is still too slow i'm reading quicker than the audiobook so that's why you guys saw me playing my switch for a few because i was just like this is too slow like way too slow they need to invent like a four time and a five time speed just saying but um this audiobook the narrator is great but she's reading like really really slow and three times speed is just not working for me so i may just physically just continue reading it myself because i i can't with the audio it's, it's i read but um yeah i'm gonna take a break i'm going to record my intros for my two videos because i made some videos yesterday um and i haven't recorded intros no not yesterday the day before yesterday i recorded two videos and i need to make the intros and i'm i'm just going to wear this shirt to make the intro because i don't care so i'm gonna quickly make those intros and then i want to make a few videos today i'm not exactly sure what happened um my camera like stopped in the middle of me talking um but i was saying i want to make a few videos i want to do two planner plan with me videos actual plan with me and my actual planner and then a plan with me and my faith planner um and then i need to actually read chapter five i skipped yesterday <laughs> reading chapter five so i should technically be on i technically should be on chapter seven but i did skip two days so i'm on chapter five now which is fine so i'm gonna read chapter five in this as well probably later on tonight before bed but um yeah, i'm gonna make those intros right now and then i'll probably eat something i'm gonna get my pink drink because i finished this drink over here and um yeah Okay, guys, so I'm back. Um, I just read the next couple of pages, so I'm on page 224, which is the end of chapter 26, and things are getting a little spicy. Um, I will say the first time reading it, I definitely got those thriller vibes, but because this is a reread for me, I pretty much, as I'm reading, remember things. Now, one thing I will say is the stuff with Bobby, I'm like confused again, and Bobby is definitely a confusing character because at the beginning, you believe her to be an angel. Um, but then as the story progresses and as things begin to happen, you start wondering, like, is she really an angel? Is she not an angel? And I honestly thought she was an angel, but I can't remember if she was an angel or not. So, um, Bobby is definitely playing the role really, really well. Um, I'm loving her so much, um, even though I'm still skeptical about what she is. And even though this is my second reread, I don't remember exactly what she was. And I did not look at my previous review. So, um, it's interesting rereading it. Thriller vibes, I'm not getting so much because I'm already, I know the story well, pretty well enough um but yeah so grace is finally opening her eyes to things okay her father has arrived at haven valley and um some stuff went down with rose oh i didn't say so rose is like the leader of haven valley i didn't tell you guys right so like i said rose is the leader of haven valley and um about 10 years prior or 13 years prior when uh grace was about six rose basically came to the people of where they lived and spoke about silas and the end times and rapture and blah 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 um so yeah rose is pretty much the leader of this place but she puts her husband in place of like the pastor so there's some stuff that went down with rose and silas that kind of like grates me like just oh i want to jump through the pages and like punch silas because i can't stand him and there's some things like there's some subtleties that i'm picking up this time around because the first time i didn't pick them up but this time around i'm reading i'm picking up some subtleties about silas and as a reader you can tell like 
he is not a good person because of the things that he says um and even now you're getting to those parts where now that grace has already in that first portion you, you see grace battling with her beliefs and in the second portion you see her now um pulling away from the way that the haven valley lived with their rules and she's starting to open her eyes she has finally met eli because ben and eli have come to haven valley like i said some stuff went down i'm not gonna say but some stuff went down um and i wasn't prepared for like i was prepared but i had forgot that rose did some real stupid stuff so um it's just it's, it's interesting it's all good i can't stand jamie jamie is her brother um at the very beginning of the story jamie was very adventurous he wanted to know more he wanted to do things he would leave and go beyond the red rope um and then there was an encounter like i said some stuff happening with silas and now he's all holier than thou believing in the rules and regulations and laws and all that stuff right and it's interesting because within this book they're quoting scripture but it reminds you that the enemy knows scripture he knows scripture so well they like he knows how to use it you know his little demons and stuff they know how to trip you up in confusion even there's a line in here that says confusion is of the devil and i'm just like really we gonna play these games like really and again as a reader you know what's going on um it's this is not a a, a, a tough thriller suspense to read it's very enjoyable um if you know the word of god then you know that this is definitely like it takes the word and perverts it in a sense um because it's literally giving you scripture but the way that they're using it and the way that they're um understanding it is very perverted and wrong it's just like oh. there's a part with this little girl named evelyn breaks my heart i think she's like 11 years old it breaks my heart with her um so we're now at the part where grace is just like i'm all out <laughs> she she's she's doing stuff that's against the rules and regulations and then you have um rose who's starting to get into this place of wavering and doubting silas which we love to see it um i will say rose has a very terrible upbringing the things that happened to her um kind of shaped who she is as a person and even though that still does not give her the right to do what she does can't stand it um i do understand because it's it's interesting to see how people are raised and how in them being raised that way they grow and get older and begin to act and things like that so i'm thoroughly enjoying this the second time around um it's it's amazing i'm not picking up those thriller like vibes but they are in the middle of like a forest or something like that so it's definitely like creepy fall spooky vibes i'm loving it so far and um i just i can't remember exactly what bobby is i can't tell if she's an angel or a demon i'm not gonna tell you guys obviously when i go back to reading it because that would spoil it but bobby is definitely one of those characters that you don't know if she's good or bad because she says good things but then things happen and she doesn't make sense so it's just like is she a demon playing games or is she really an angel because i know angels are neither good nor bad they do the word they, they do the will of god so you know they're neither good nor bad so i'm enjoying it again it's amazing i love it i would definitely recommend this if you're not into thrillers or suspense novels this definitely will keep you on because it's definitely um a fast-paced read things happen it keeps you going um there's no slow pacing whatsoever and the characters themselves are really interesting um you can't get a lot of depth to the characters but you definitely can see growth and for a typical reader it might be fast because of how fast paced it is but i think i enjoy that because i'm not into thrillers and suspense novels this works really well and um i love it it's pretty much a cult in their you know them living in deception and there's there's a lot to pick out of this that i can relate to the word of god and um i mean you can get a whole sermon out of this book honestly if you really dissect it and dive deep i mean with the spiritual perception and awakening of your eyes and the vomiting scene i told you guys like that is like a spiritual purging that's what it's called it's when you purge um that's pretty much what grace was doing and it's just it's interesting to see things happen so i have 100 pages left to go um right now it's about 5 14 so i literally have 100 pages well less than 100 pages left right 225 110 pages or 105 105 pages left to go um i completely scrapped the audio because i can't the audiobook is too slow for me as a the audiobook might be good for other people but for me it was just too slow i was reading quicker and it was pulling me out of the story so i went back to just physically reading it so um the next clip will be me reading the last few pages and then giving my final thoughts but i adore this book i think this book is amazing and it has me super excited to go into nine by rochelle decker which has some correlation to this a bit so um Yes, we have it.
Okay guys, so as you saw in the previous clip, I finished reading The Girl Behind the Red Rope and I now remember why I love this book so much. Um, I think this time around I am going to give it a 4.5. I don't know what I gave it before. I don't know if it was a 5 or 4.5, but I'm going to give it a 4.5. Um, this was really, really good. This book really focuses on our fear and how we um, tend to allow our fear to keep us trapped and stuck in darkness when we don't have to let that happen and how you have the choice of following the path of light or darkness fear or love or the choice of having sight or having blindness and I just I love it um it definitely the last third really pulls everything together um and and really just makes you open your eyes because like the first two thirds is pretty much just fun action-packed uh, suspense thrillerist kind of vibes but that last third really focuses um on truth um what the gospel talks about and things like that it's not heavy with the scripture but there is scripture involved um and you can obviously interpret where he put the scripture at and sometimes there's actual scripture written in it but um i love it i remember who bobby was totally forgot that that's what that was um eli is amazing still to me i love eli eli is my little pudding pie um silas we still can't stand silas i will never like silas silas will forever be like when i read this book i think of supernatural because bobby in this book reminds me of bobby from supernatural and then silas reminds me of not lucifer but the other demon i don't know what his name was on the show but he wore like this all white suit. If I could find his picture or the dude's name, I'll put it here. So the picture might be here. But like it was an episode where he came in. He was wearing all white. And that's who I think of when I think of Silas. Um, because Supernatural definitely is steeped in um, Christian theology. But it also includes other beliefs as well. And it is such a beautiful show. Now, obviously, Supernatural is a worldly show that somewhat perverts the... Um, the word and who god is but i still enjoy watching it because i know the truth so you know it's a fun show but um i think this is definitely a great book for people to read because it's not too dark it's not too deep um it's definitely a nice in between and i really just love this i'm so glad i reread it um i'm definitely gonna include my tabs because i found a lot more amazing quotes in here um that i need to definitely tab up and it was just it was beautiful just beautiful so i definitely would recommend you guys check it out um it's amazing it's amazing and what you get at the end of the story is not what you expect to get and like I said this is steeped in us understanding fear and un understanding love and darkness versus light and uh, beautiful just chef's kiss so I'm even more excited now to read nine by Rochelle Decker and to check out more of Ted Decker's works because I do have some of them on my shelf already um so yeah I'm going to add my tabs into this I'm going to write my updated review on both my Goodreads accounts and um that is it so I'm gonna end this vlog I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope it wasn't too long I don't think it was too long because I did speed up the reading portion but um yeah I'm, I'm glad I reread it so that is it uh all the links for this will be down below for the copy of this on Amazon you can get a hardcover on Amazon and um yeah I love it so I highly would recommend you guys check it out and um give it a go listen to the audiobook read the ebook uh get the physical copy if you want but I definitely would recommend it so thank you guys for watching reading comment and subscribing and I will see you guys on the next video